are we on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let's make the phone check. Lights. Lights. Cameras. <laughs> this is Swanky. This is Lifestyle. This is Culture. Welcome to the social center of everything culture. Culture Daily. We shall never bow down to their gods. Yes. <laughs> At one point in time, now I'm beginning to feel like my man, uh, Black Rasta. You know, <laughs> if you allow me, I'm going to be hopping in this seat till it breaks. <laughs> Big shouts going out to Black Rasta, though. Anyways, uh, let me tell you what. So when banks are closed, okay, ZPay is always open. Always, always open. Now, redeem your MoneyGram cash uh, pickup token onto your phone using ZPay Mobile, uh, mobile money. Now, don't waste your money on transportation to the bank. Nope, not in this day and age. Don't waste your time until it's important, um, extra important. Don't waste your time in long lines and filling out plenty of paperwork. ZPay Mobile Money is not just convenient, it's also secure and reliable. Well, switch to ZPay Mobile Money because it's safer it's cheaper it's more convenient Jimmy D as I'm telling you believe me every first time you used to get 10 cities plus airtime in that cool how do you do it dial star 270 hush press 7 for moneygram to wallet enter your six digit pin then enter your eight digit moneygram reference number a few uh, security questions you have to answer correctly and boom you are through now summer is also officially here and uh, all the biggest titles come alive on the big screens you just had it um, you know all this interview there you can watch spider-man across the spider-verse the flash transformers rise of the beast only which one was uh, premiering tonight uh, Transformers. That's Transformers. Tomorrow. That's mm. tomorrow. Yep. Yes. So you can't miss it. Indiana Jones is also there. Mission Impossible. You can get some Hollywood, Bollywood, and Nollywood and top quality Ghanaian movies this season at Ghana's number one cinema franchise and complements your movie experience with Ghana's number one popcorn. It's the best time of the year to, to create and share memories with the ones you love at the West Hill Mall and the Crown Mall branches. I'm talking about Silver Bed Cinemas. Website to catch more action on is silverbedcinema.com forward slash West Hills or forward slash Accra or uh, you can check them out on their socials at Silverbed Ghana. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into the convo for today. Hmm. My rhyme scheme is on the way. Oh, hmm. Charlie. So just about to make your day. <laughs> okay. We ain't in the month of May, but I promise you good things come to those who stay. And wait. And today we brought them Rocky Dawuni. Oh! <laughs> See, just for the three points. I know, just for the three points, man. Rocky Dawoodie live in the building. Legendary. Legendary. <laughs> I hear so many artists complaining of the system, the structures, the this, the that, but Rocky doesn't complain. <laughs> Have you ever heard him? Unless it's about something social political. Well, I, I complain. I mean, complain is, you know, a very important part of the human But you condition. make it work. But the thing is that, you know, when you complain, you know, you have to also have some form of, you know, mode to also take action. Take because action, yes. you can play the fence and expect that something will change. Uh -huh. You know, you have to be proactive and mm. invest, you know, the vision of what you think will mm. be good for you to manifest. Rather mm -hmm. than, you know, when it comes to complaint, we all can, mm. you mm. know, but when it comes to action, how many of us can? I'm picking two things from what you just said, investments and action. Now, I want to start off with something. I, I, I wanted to take the convo on a very light note. But since you've mentioned investment, <laughs> you know, um, Stoneboy was here, and then he talked about how um, you know it's it costs so much money now, you know, just to be able to put good sound out and promote it. What is it like in your in your field in your world as well? Well, you know, the thing is that to first of all to create a piece of art. Yeah. You know, there's so many different levels of that art being created, and then that art being. Um, you know, giving the best treatment in mm -hmm, terms mm -hmm. of bringing the best professionals to mm -hmm. realize it in a certain level. If you, your intentions are to place it in a place that will also compete. Yes. I like to use the word compete, not in a good way, with other products other out there. Products, yeah. So first of all, the music thing starts with you, the creative, the vision. You know, you make a song. You love the song. The mm -hmm. song is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, then secondly, now how do you translate that uh, song into 
something that is tangible, that mm -hmm. can be heard. So you bring in producers, you go into the studio, and you work on And with all of this, you need personnel. You need to hire personnel. Uh, you know, personnel will have to get to the location. Uh, you know, things will have to be uh, uh, recorded, mm -hmm. you know, and then once it's recorded, you need, you know, you first of all, you've gone to a producer. Yes. So a producer can either come with predetermined concepts or yes. he will come and he'll work with musicians to realize your vision. Yeah. So now the first phase is done. Now you go to the mixer. The mixer will have to cost some money. The mixer puts it together. You create the product. Mm -hmm. Then you go to mastering. Mm -hmm. Then the mastering to another stage to now to take whatever you've done and sometimes you might even do this over and over again because you might track, you might not like it, you might yeah. retrack, yeah. you might mix, you might not like it, you might remix mm -hmm. and all of that. So all of these levels are happening just before that's what you call a song mm -hmm. is done. Mm -hmm. Before other people will come and give the opinion, oh, this one, mimpe enyumwe or mipewe, mipewe. So that's just the basic baseline mm -hmm. before you think about marketing. What does it cost you yes. to produce your music? Oh, to produce it? Because you, it, you it, know, it, I'd like not to look at cost. Okay. You see, because when you look at cost, then you are putting, because the cost of you putting something beautiful out there, that will stand a testament of time, that will be representative of you, not only within your times, but beyond your times, is priceless. Yes. So sometimes, you know, there are certain things that are easy. You know, you go, it doesn't really cost much, but for me, I put in everything, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I remember so many years, everybody was asking, uh, bra, who is dying? <laughs> <laughs> and I told them, Charlie, I'm dying while I listen to my music because Please. that is where every investment that I have had mm -hmm. throughout my life and then all the resources that I get goes right into creating that piece of art because... I feel that that is my purpose, mm -hmm. and I have to invest everything, both time, money, uh, mental states, and even sometimes even relationships, mm -hmm. you know, because you have to fully be dedicated to it mm -hmm. in order for you to realize that. So to put it out there, it's a very costly, costly. We were having yeah. a debate on air this morning about um, the cost of promoting, creating and promoting music yes. from back in the day and as compared to now. Yes. Uh, you being, I mean, a, a full-blown musician. Yes. Which is more expensive? Back in the time when it was more the analog system, CDs, a presenter, was it a better system, easier? Or now that that's multiple digital streams, multiple people to, to take care of. The value chain has become even longer. Yes. Um, the competi competition has now become tougher. The yes. terrain is, is, there's more activity in there. Where, do you, where, where would you say that would, it's costly or it's more expensive or more difficult? Um, I think that the thing is, you know, prior to having the opportunity of the digital age. Okay. By digital age, I don't mean that, that the internet. Yes. So it was a digital age before the internet. internet. MP3 was, yes. uh, you know, precursor yeah. to the internet yeah. age. Yeah. Okay. So that time, you know, first of all, you had the investments in terms of, you know, after recording, in terms of the CD being mm. printed, and once the CD is print, printed, then the record label or whoever is the institution mm -hmm. that is we'll representing take, yeah. the music, first of all, will get publicists. They will have a radio person. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they will also have somebody, too, who probably goes into the shops to make sure that you are getting visibility. Yes, so those shop. are all chains of investment that they have to do for the music. So first of all, the publicist will cost money because you have to hire somebody that can give you proper placement. You know, if it's a news magazine or news article, has there has to be. to be articles be written about the record. Mm -hmm. There has to be reviews. Mm -hmm. And those reviews to usually, uh, like for me, you know, you know, when I release a record, you know, we'll make sure that we get like some of the best, most important, you know, rough trade, some of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, key, key uh, media that are important to place you in a yeah. way that people will start seeing who you are. Yeah. So to do that, you have to find the right uh, publicist who can give you that That's, posturing yeah. and that costs money. So right when that is done, then the important, most important part which um, a lot of times we don't see is now the artist getting on the road mm -hmm. to promote the product. Mm -hmm. And to promote it to a lot of times, you know, radio interviews will be set. 
uh, there's in in places like the U.S. You have two sets. You have college radio. You have triple A, and then you have commercial radio. So many levels, levels. of radio, mm. and you have to build the momentum from probably college radio. College news, yeah. So college radio, you have like all the colleges. So once the music starts building momentum there, and then it starts charting on college radio charts, then that chart is used to approach the other charts and say, hey, see, look at these markets. Mm -hmm. This is happening. So it's a, it's a process. And it's like, look, this song is this. And so you better take a look at it. And then people will listen to it. And then all of a sudden, they, it will start spinning on individual uh, stations. Maybe we did a triple A format. Then you start pulling all of those data too together as a pitch for the next level. So before a song gets to the place where everybody hears it, back in the, the, the prior to the digital age, it was all of these processes before you hear the music on your radio every mm -hmm. day when you turn it on, you mm -hmm. hear it. But what has happened is that with the advent of the digital age, it's allowed uh, the ability for easier visibility. Okay. But easier visibility and then also easier access uh, mm -hmm. to your fan base, to be able to build a fan base much more quicker. Mm -hmm. You don't need to uh, go through uh, gatekeepers because formerly they, you have to sign with a record label in order for you to even get that type of visibility mm -hmm. because they had the, the connect. Mm -hmm. Now, when you put out a song, let's say even one, two, three people are able to access it. That's something. Mm -hmm. So what is allowed is that it's allowed the ability for new types of, and I'll say that even the advent, the reinvigoration uh, of the appreciation of African music is due to the digital age. Because if we were still back in that, at the beginning, we, all these sounds will have to go through a gatekeeper Before in the West who have to approve the sound and say, oh, okay, Africa is ready for, let's say, Afrobeats or something. So now we're going to put our... Uh, hand our our efforts behind it, mm -hmm. but with the digital age, it came like a tornado. Mm -hmm. It was coming. People were sharing it. The algorithms were picking it up. It was showing up in people's playlists. DJs all of a sudden were were hearing it in clubs, not only within the continent but also without of the continent. Many DJs too, you know, they used to depend on record pools in America mm -hmm. for them to get the new releases. Now they know they can go online, you know, and go to some country and just listen to a radio okay. station in some so country. On, on the, so on the, yes, on the back of that, um, you've been an independent artist or yes. a record label based artist. Um, I've been an independent independent artist with my own uh, record label. So I go, each album is uh, is another project to work with or partner with somebody. Yes. Off the back of entrepreneurship, yes. which is your independent record label. Yes. Is there a reason why you haven't looked at, you know, working with all these Universals and Sonys and co like as in you being signed under them, not a partnership? Um, you know, the thing is that I have always felt the need to be able to be in control of my, you know, okay. my music. And I have also been in the industry long enough to see issues of, you know, very established musicians that mm -hmm. you will respect. And you meet them and then they will tell you that they don't really own you any of their music, yeah. but they were signed to big labels. Mm -hmm. So, and... After the limelight is gone and all of that is gone, you really own nothing, you know. So from the onset, I, I made a calculated effort that for me to even get into the conversation of being signed, I needed to create some body of work that I felt that, okay, I own it myself. And then you can go from project to project and see, okay, I can use this project as a means to do this deal because I want to get into this market or I want to expand my, you know, so so then you go into different record label mm -hmm. uh, deals. But, you know, I have been, you know, I have walked into boardrooms, I've been offered deals and all of that. I and I have looked at them, read, and it never really resonated with the vision of the kind of artist that I wanted to be. And then also because yeah. I'm also an artist that wants to say something. You know, I feel that my music okay. is about communicating a certain message. And sometimes, too, when you have that independence of thought and you want to utilize your music as something tangible to uphold and inspire a, a, a type of social mentality, mm -hmm. you know, it might not align with the objectives of a commercially 
uh, 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 focused okay. label. That, that actually answers a part of the question I was going to ask you about <laughs> um, what are the hitches, you know, that come or the stumbling blocks that may come an artist's way, you know, when he or she is working with um, mm -hmm. uh, a label. Or not. You, you know, you know, I'm not saying that you know being signed to a label is not a good thing. I'm just talking of my personal. Personal, yes. So it's on person to person so, base, base and what the objective and vision of the artist is. Mm. There, are, you know, some artists who are interested in just the fame, mm, you correct. know, and also the machinery of you know quickly being popular. You know, in that case, you know, you go a record label signs you, and these days there are 360 deals, most of them. So literally, you know, the record company is coming in, it's owning, you know, your image, your brand, you know, the music maybe, uh, you might write it or you might not even write it. It will be like a hundred other music writers that are, you know, uh, part of the record labels pool. They will provide the songs for you and then you will be an interpreter of the song. So, you know, the, 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 the piece of the pie is very, very little, but at the same time too, they have the capacity and uh, uh, they, they have the network okay. and the ability to let me, let me ask quite a tough plug question you here. in a big way. Yes. What is the what is the catch with uh, owning your masters as opposed to a record label owning it and using its weight, might, and power to push it, you know, miles ahead and expand the network of the song and all? Well, the thing is that you will be rewarded with fame. But in the long run, if you don't own your voice, then who are you? Mm. You know? That's deep. You know, so that is usually <laughs> the question that you have to ask, you know. I mean, fame and all the laurels of the world, the material world and all of that, we came to meet it, you know. And I think that the allure of it sometimes makes us feel that we must, we have to compromise what is fundamentally important to us mm. in order for us to... To, to, to attain that. Mm. But once you attain it, then what? You know, and I tell you, fame can be empty. It's a lonely place to walk through, you know, especially when you don't come from a position of your own truth, mm. you know. So I try to say that it is based upon what you want to do. You know, so there are certain ways that even artists who have leverage, let's say artists who've come from independence, and this happened within the rap world. Mm -hmm. When rap was not really mainstream, there's a lot of independent labels that cropped up to mm -hmm. push rap, and most of them were artist-driven labels. Mm -hmm. Most of them were entrepreneurs from the neighborhood who started it. And then once it started gaining traction by then, most of these had already created stables. So the big labels, by the time they came in, it wasn't something like they were going to come own everything. It came more in terms of partnership, because mm -hmm. these, artists, these people were already pushing in a way to have a better negotiating ability and so they were able to strike certain deals that they did not relinquish everything mm. you know you gave part of it in order to be part of a certain game mm. but you know with every game you have to lose something you know you 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 gain the world but you, you lose a bit something. of you yourself you know we so had a lot that's of the thing. independent <laughs> artists with the independent record labels yes. um self uh, formed you know uh, record companies yes. that manage your affairs, like in your case, um, are very hesitant on signing on new talent. Um, I, I don't know if that you have actually experienced that as well. You know, the thing is that um, to manage an artist mm. properly, to position it and market it, and also be able to plug into uh, other places and fund like you know shows you know because a lot of in the in the beginning you have to fund the artists to things, be yeah. you know it requires so much investment mm -hmm. and most of the time uh, to be honest a lot of independent labels are not making money they're putting in money most of the time because a lot of times you know even the returns that are coming in you have to put it into the next thing that you're yeah, doing yeah. so the I think it's sometimes they are just strapped in terms of their ability to do due diligence and mm. I feel that if you make the mistake of signing somebody when they, 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 you know, their talent and all of that, and you don't have the capacity to be able to do them right and position them in the right, right place, sometimes it might not be, you might not be serving them right. And I feel that like that's the hesitancy that some labels have. It's a matter of capacity, mm. you know, but if they're able to build their capacity, let's say if uh, independent labels in this country, we had like a, a project, which I feel that it should be something that 
if our um, you know, uh, industry is interested in growth, there should be a capacity building for Ghanaian-based, let's say, record labels. First of all, it's in terms of capacity building is first of all in terms of training the yeah. owners of these labels mm -hmm. with the right tools. You know, how you go, I mean, you might have started it based upon passion, but there's a certain methodology and knowledge that is, you know, involved in that. So you train in that capacity building in terms of being able to hire the staff that you need. You know, these are all areas of investment that I feel that not only the government or, you know, but if we want to invest in an industry, we have to start building the capacity of the industry, putting the right mindsets in place, um, empowering the already people who are already doing it. Mm. You know, the thing is that we, when we want to do that, then we go and somebody go and bring his offer <laughs> just because some it's, money has been voted for it. And you say, well, what will you for? Then you bring them. Whilst there are people who have already done that, you need to put the investment in those people those people yeah. in order to expand it. So I feel that, you know, the the the, the issue of independent labels, which is most of African countries, we want to run to the big labels. Why are the big, well, we have to think, why are the big labels running here? That's why you have to think. You know, you, you, you yeah, see, yeah. Don't, don't think that, oh, now the big, everybody wants to sign. Because if you're going to go sign, you're signing at 360 degrees, you probably don't own your publishing, you probably don't own your art, you don't own Nothing. everything. You've taken an advance, and let me tell you about these advances, you know. I mean, when you, when they give you 20,000, 20,000, you take maybe five albums to even pay that album because already the, the, the accounting that is, is involved in that, you will never recoup that money to be able to. So even, you know, I remember I, the uh, managers used to tell me, you mm -hmm. know, they like, you know, you might be in a haste maybe to go to a record label and mm -hmm. sign a deal. But let me tell you, the money that you are giving on the table when you sign is all you are going to ever get, get from the record label. That's you know, it. so that's to say that there, there is the allure of the big labels, but also you have to know what you are getting into, into. before you get into it. And then you make a decision that I want to do this. Then when you we touch do it. on music, Rocky, and politics very soon. We'll come into that. <laughs> yeah, you should be standing for us MP for your area now. <laughs> you, are putting me, you are putting me in a very uh, uncomfortable yeah, situation we right now. We have actually complained bitterly um, about how we don't have a, a, a good representation, representation of creative yeah. arts in there. But there are heavily knowledgeable people like you that will have to push, will have to force you <laughs> out of the comfort stations. zone of music. <laughs> speaking on our behalf. We'll, we'll touch on that uh, in a bit. But can you walk us through, um, just so people can relate to some, and uh, not necessarily in terms of uh, costing actual figures, but um, some of the heavy investment that you've had to put back into a project, you know, just to keep the, the Rocky brand moving. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, you know, numbers are, you know, I, I just like not to even look at numbers because, you know, let's, let's, let me tell you an example. Okay, so the song Never Bow Down. Yes. Okay, so Never Bow Down... Um, you know, first of all, it started which as a, which was nominated for Best Global Music at the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so post my last Grammy, which was uh, Voice of Boom Boom, mm -hmm. I've been working on a new album. So I was like, okay, this never when when Never Bow Down was being made, you know, the element of the hip hop dimensions to it and all of that. I was like, okay, this should be a single. So immediately, you know, when we started, I started working on it in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, came back, you know, worked with some producers out of Canada, Bob Rhythm and a whole lot of other people. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Ghana, started working on the, on, the, on, the, on the record, you know, wrote, you know, most part of the song. And then afterwards, I was like, okay, you know, I want to do, so already producer costs, uh, all of that had happened already. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then also, even when you think of movement, I was just costs. about to say that. Let's not skip the travel. That's the about travel. All of, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Although you can send files, but me and myself traveling yes. here, you know, tracking stuff, writing because this is my comfort zone that I create. I create better when I'm here. So then, uh, after it was done, we all listened to it. And we're like, this song needs a feature. Mm -hmm. So when I was back uh, on tour in the U.S., I go into the studio. Uh, the first person I brought into the uh, for the fe uh, feature, obviously, studio costs paid. Uh -huh. They put um, their their voice on it. 
Uh, but then later on, they didn't like their performance. Please hold on right there. Yes. Um, I, I want to bring Cyril and Olele in on something. This is just one song I'm yes, talking about. I, I just noticed in the video of Never Bow Down that yes. you were in a studio yes. working. I, I hardly see um, or can't imagine a Rocky that when you're working with his regular focus right sound card hmm. in his house. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> for draft writing. Uh, I, 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 no, no, no. I, I, you see me with a guitar. You know, uh -huh. the thing is that I, I like to walk in nature and play and, you know, the, the idea of not being in front of technology, mm -hmm. especially during the creative process. Mm -hmm. connect, lot, connect. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, that's where you create. And then when you create, then you go to the technology. Then the technology, Carl Face, is where you start trying to push the ideas that you've Amplify created. Idea, now, yeah, into a sketch. Okay. Of what you were. So I like that process. But everybody's different. You see, mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. there are people who started just by sitting in the computer. So they are not even comfortable when they come into nature and I'm with my guitar. Mm -hmm. say, yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to <laughs> be riding. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how they are. So it's all about your comfortable zones and all of that, you know. So for me, you know, they, I, I like to, and then when I, when I do collaborations to, uh, you know, you want to always be able to kind of get the best out of people. So they have to be in a place where they're comfortable. So most of the, I know the newer musicians, you know, they are more like, you know, because there's a lot of a lot of studios, you know, your own studio, your computer studio, and this. And so they like to be right there. The beat is playing, and then they, like, create on the spot, you know. I like to create on the spot, but at the same time, too, I like to, take away, be away from the studio, and then get the ideas and come into the studio and then work with the context of the inspiration that is happening over there and then create the work, you know. So, you know, it comes yeah, in different... Guy, I mean, you're talking like professional, uh, you know, studio Set -up. setups. Yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. Once you get into a professional studio setup, you know, the thing is that most of the time you have to be ready because... You know, let's say you're working like the village studios or you know any other big studios. The the production has to be if it's pre-produced, it has to be already ready. Your lyrics have to be ready. You don't go to write in there, mm -hmm. you know, because an hour in some of those studios is a fortune. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you get in there and you're tracking, you got to make sure that all the work has been done. done. So what you go in there is mostly Makes the performance, mm -hmm. laying the work, and then the creativity that you're going to add to the works that you have done. Mm -hmm. So that you can be able to maximize the time and also utilize it effectively. You know, so it's all a matter of being able to plan. Okay. That's why maybe certain home studios are very important because you can do the, all the pre-production uh, all the work that is but needed. But finalize it there. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. You <laughs> go to a place so where so you basically can... Basically, you, you do... you. So, I don't know if you do that now with what you've gotten to, but you do your recordings at home. Get you, everything You know, right. even home, home is recently that I really started doing oh, wow. more at home. I will record demos like... I will do like, you know, guitar, record, voice notes, because all of those stuff. Right. But I don't even do like a lot of the music programming and mm. stuff at Why? home. Why, why um, because when I'm ready with the concept, I, w I go to the studio right okay. away. Okay. You know, okay. So I go to the studio, I will have, you know, uh, before I go there, I will have, let's say, um, you know, whether it's a, if there's a programmer or if it's a drummer, they will come and rehearse with me and go through all of that wow. at home and be ready. Before the you singers go. will come and rehearse with me. Singers, sometimes you can bring in during the session, depending right. on the idea. Right. So then we go into the studio and then we start tracking. You know, so you go, the drama knows that you've rehearsed this, this, or the uh, so programmer you knows that. Session, you actually rehearse before you go into the yeah, studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's a pre production thing. And then mm. you do that just because you give yourself more opportunity for creativity. Mm. You know, so when you give yourself more opportunity, then you can be able to realize the full potential. Because when you put what you have, and then there's another person in there who wants to add something to it, they already have a framework to add to it. So that becomes uh, an additional insight, insight. that helps mm. push it forward. Mm. But if you don't have things very organized and, f and then everybody's putting the ideas, you, you might right end up with time. a, yeah, 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 being okay, then more we'll confused. Let you lose than, uh, yes. track of your thoughts. But we were talking about, you know, trying to uh, uh, put value to the making of some of the, uh, some, a project that has really taken a lot of investment. Yes. You spoke of the back and forth uh, travel, you know, yes. that's costly. You spoke of the producer. Yes. I, if we can, we can move on on it. Yeah, yeah, you know, 
know, so we the, never back, never, never bow down. down yes. You know, so then the producer, and then once the song was done, you know, we were like, okay, you know, let's shoot a video for it. So I came to Ghana. So first of all, I had to get you know the, you know, the video, the the, the director, mm -hmm. you know, the concepts, you know, which were all investments. I mean, you're talking, you know, over like over five five thousand. USD, USD over mm -hmm. if you if you're doing things properly, you know, um, you know. So that you get that done. I mean, sometimes when you own your own cameras and stuff, you know, you can be able to cut down on certain things. So you bring in the the the, the expertise and all mm -hmm. of that. Okay, so then that is the investment, and then once the uh, the the song is released, first of all, uh, you hire a publicist. Mm -hmm. I will, I always hire a publicist. So you hire publicists for the project, and a publicist not only within Ghana, a publicist in the U.S., a publicist that can start putting the story in trades around uh, trade magazines and blogs and stuff around the world. Granted, you do, uh, we have, myself over the years, we have a big, huge media list that okay. we ourselves, global media ask, list, yes, that we have an in-house media list that we can be able to immediately reach a lot of people. But when you reach to, you need other professionals to come in to do all the follow-ups, you know, for you to make sure that, oh, somebody listened to the song. Oh, it might go into some influential person. They got it, but they, they're too overwhelmed. So somebody to keep them in the conversation, like, oh, have you checked this? No, no, I didn't check it. Okay, next week I'm going to check in. So all the follow-ups to make sure that you are, and then... Um, we were like, oh, we need, you know, uh, then there was Black Hero who is, um, first of all, I don't want to expose this, but I was like, okay, I need a, a, somebody to guest on this song. So I sent it to a few of our artists here. I didn't hear back on that. Oh, wow. um, and then immediately uh -oh. I sent it to, um, you know, one of the younger Marleys worked on it, uh, got a vocal in it. Um, and then also um, uh, Black Hero, who's like this fast rising star out of Jamaica, who's been signed to American label. So he was getting a lot of traction in the he US. He sent the Grammy award winning music. Grammy nominated. Grammy nominated. <laughs> let's go, let's go Jen. And, 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 and I will everywhere not. We are. And no matter let's what you do, I would never mention names. No, 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 no. We don't want names. We don't want names. We've, we've had, we've names had pivotal now. conversations here. Where we talk about the cost of missed opportunity <laughs> to our talent. And it's no, that's beautiful that we didn't thing, have to know? draw this from you and you said it yourself. We don't even want to know you the sent name. a Grammy yes. nominated yes. music. Not a, my post Grammy post nomination. Yes. Working on my first post single. Yeah. You know, and uh you know, because I, I, I'm constantly interested in, you know, so going on my first single to put out, you know, yes. So so it got to this Jamaican artist who immediately, his management, you know, he was in L.A. for this. They got in touch with me. they like, oh, you know, when are you getting to Los Angeles? You know, we were, he's ready to do it and all of that. And I've liked his, you know, black hero. He's rising. I mean, he just played uh, Royal Albert Hall with UB40 just hmm. a few days ago <laughs> and City Splash. Based upon, the, you know, the nomination that he got on this album was covered by so, so, this song was covered by so many media in the Caribbean, and to a point where he, he started saying that he's like the first reggae artist actually to even be nominated in the global sector of the whole thing. So that is the value that it added to his career, you know? He can't and, 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 um, and the thing is that when the record was released, it did big, it got, and then once you're nominated for Grammy, that's cost again, mm. you know, because now the you price. gotta travel to the, the place where the Grammy is, uh, you gotta deal with, you know, artists flying, uh, producers flying in, because the producer too, that was his first nomination, mm. you know, he's been producing for a long time, he's a French, uh, uh, Canadian producer, so he worked with me on this, so that was his first nomination, so he bought his own ticket to come to Los Angeles to be, probably because it was, he was ex excited that he's been nominated now uh, on the song, you know. So just to tell you the peripheral value of that, but all of that too was investment. So me thinking that this song, I put it out right there, we've done everything, I'm back in my coconut farm in, 
you know, in, in, in Ghana to chill and all of that and write new music all of a sudden and nomination. So nomination, hire publicist again. Cost. You know? So you have to now there's new oxygen in the, the, the song. So you hire media again to make sure that they position and utilize the opportunity to as much as I can. Right. And Black Heroes people too, they got their own publicists, you know, and started utilizing it for his agency, doing whatever business they can because he was also a fast rising uh, star. And now he's been, uh, uh, you know, he's featured on a, on a song. Mm -hmm. And the thing was that this was not an album. This was, the song was nominated. You know, so that even gave him such a valuable mm -hmm. uh, profile. And they utilized, so just to tell you, we are talking, you know, a lot of money, you know, just for this single. Mm. And it's, and then not even thinking of any, the returns, you know what I mean? They're, you're not thinking of return. This is like mm -hmm. reacting to pushing it out there so that the song can have the visibility that it is. And then the returns, you leave it up to God. Mm -hmm. Streaming can get it. You can get more concerts uh, that are happening, uh, more shows, uh, all of these things that will be as a result of you attaining those profiles. So mm -hmm. that's how a lot of times some of these things, uh, you are able to uh, recoup them eventually. You know, but the, the visibility and access and, you know, it's, it's very, very key after the song it's released. It's released. Cyril, I don't know. You're gonna you're gonna touch on something. I was gonna for... to touch on the PR cost, but you you kind of um, touch on it. But I just want to know that we know your brand. It's your your reputation always precedes you, and it's a very well preserved and impactful reputation. Your name carries weight. Thank you. I would you. say on the continent is one of the most powerful names out there in the creative space. How has the PR build up been? Because the bigger you are, but Mali said the bigger you are. The harder, oh, yes. Jimmy Cliff, the no, harder no, you are, the harder you fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know people will come. <laughs> Our industry is volatile. Yes. There are yes. issues. You're a human being as well. But your press track record is green. Thank you. And Thank the you. moment your name comes up, it's totally positive. How much PR has gone into that? Well, the, 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 the thing is that there's PR and that there's goodwill. Okay. You okay. see, so... Uh, PR is something that you have media people go out there and then also uh, organize and orchestrate a certain image of you. But when it comes to uh, uh, goodwill, goodwill is something that you acquire through the works that you do. And I feel that uh, with in relation to me, uh, over the years, just you know, staying true to yeah. my music, um, you know, also being somebody too that also believed in the power of music for social transformation and diversifying in terms of being able to connect with also other organizations and working on social impact mm -hmm. initiatives has also won me a lot of goodwill, not only within the music fraternity, but also in the international stages of uh, leadership and government, the United Nations and mm -hmm. all of these areas where I've been able to leverage my music, my profile and my personality to play, uh, you know, meaningful role in contributing to big social initiatives. I feel that all of those have been instrumental. And then also my striving for constant excellence. You see, I've never settled for less. Since I started here, you know, as a, a boy with a vision in Koforidia who was like, hey, I wanted to be a musician and looking at the covers of albums and be like, hey, one day we are grow, I want to play with this artist and all of that. But then building up that conviction, you know, going to University of Ghana, meeting the right folks that I wanted to work with who inspired me and we worked together, started our, you know, our journey, myself, you know, moving from that trajectory, traveling to go learn about music. Because what I did was also is that what people don't, understand is that I took my time to also go learn about music. After university, I traveled to the U.S. and I went and interned with a record label, wow. you know, and I worked in promotion. I did radio promotion uh, and college promotion for a record label, uh, Delicious Vinyl, for a long time. That had Tone Look and all of those people, Master Ace, everybody, and Farside and all of that. I was doing college 
radio there. So that was where I started learning about promotion, college, you know, college promotion, and then also uh, establish my record label at that time. You see, so then I also figured out, okay, the independence of, you know, you need promotion, you know, you need certain visibility, you need certain key markets, you need to identify key markets for your music, uh, you need to identify at that time record pools. So which record pools are influential there, what DJs are influential, all the of these data that well. are important to breaking a record, you know. So I learned all of those things and then I distilled that information into what I was doing to guide my own career. So sometimes it's important to the knowledge Base and the intellectual understanding of the ecosystem in which you are operating is key to your success. You know, you have to know the radio people are important. Uh, 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 the, the bloggers are important, especially in yeah. Ghana. Uh, you know, saying the right things are important. important. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 don't, have, I, plug, I honestly yeah. don't. Have, I honestly don't want to have a question. Though. Uh, like, I want to just listen. You want to just listen? <laughs> can you? Can you oh, leave me alone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, you are on fire. Seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me just add, uh, I was going to ask you about this, but I'm happy you touched on. Let me say shouts to Caroline Sampson. She's actually uh, tuned in. Uh, she said she was listening. Uh, she's inspired. She, so she was supposed to do music, but unfortunately, she... <laughs> well, she started. Oh, okay, she started. Okay, Don't say she was supposed C to. Caro, I remember. <laughs> no, don't make her make with Ed. She started. Caro uh, Caro is a former well, musician. Don't yeah. say she tried to do music. Caro, former musician. Caro, former musician. <laughs> <laughs> your last one. <laughs> Caro. You mentioned key market. It's, you know, very yes. ideal for every artist to know where he or she plays well in. Yes. For, for you, I, I, I know these might be trade secrets, but um, I, I want to understand what strategy um, you put in, um, not strategy you put in, but which markets work best for Rocky Downey? Um, you know, and does it is it dependent on the kind of song you're going to release? Is it dependent on the lyrical content, rhythm? Um, I think... It's not the cont not the song you're gonna. It's also uh, dependent on the people who gravitate towards what you represent as a musician. I mean, when you've had the kind of career longevity that you have had, you would know that. Um, I mean, to tell you an example, um, you know, when I was doing my first, um, not 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 first tour, but first concert, I had released branches. Uh, of the same tree album, mm -hmm. the one that got me my first nomination. And that's 2016. And so there was a European tour that was organized. And part of the tour, when I was playing the major cities, by the same time, part of the tour, there was a request for me to play in Greenland. Okay. You know, so I was like, hmm, Greenland? I mean, you know, I have, you know, I mean, obviously I've read it in my geography. I was a student of geography. Um, so it was kind of, you know, something that was, a novelty for me to go to Greenland. So we land in Greenland and the airport is packed with people who have been, so for unknowing to me, the music has found its way there. The music has a big fan base and all of that kind of stuff. People at the airport in Greenland to come, people like, you know, autographs. You know, I was saying that it, I felt like one of these boy bands <laughs> you know, and obviously, you know, somebody like me, you know, I don't think of myself as like a boy band, you know, right. but it was humbling to see where the music unwittingly has, gen you know, the concert, the play, all the concerts that were there were hugely packed and all of that. So then that set off a lot of reggae people, even, you know, Ziggy Marley calls me. Uh, a lot of people call me, yeah, man, I'm on here of the show in, um, in, in Greenland, man. So all of them, that they didn't know that reggae music or like has that kind of fun. People didn't know. Hmm. But with that happening, everybody was like, whoa, look, this is a great place to go play because here I am, the first reggae African musician hmm. playing over there, and it was a huge success. You know, so just to say that, you can have certain markets, but when the music goes out too, it starts creating its own market. And these days too, sometimes that's where technology has come to be valuable sometimes. Sometimes you look at your analytics too. Hmm. When you look at analytics, when you release a record, like a lot of my, you know, for, for lack of a better word, the places that I thought that US, America, and Europe were my markets, a lot of the analytics shows that India, Pakistan, <laughs> All of these places, I'll release a record. South, you know, I just played in Costa Rica. 
And I just did a big, a few big, huge concerts in Costa Rica. Huge concerts, you know? So you, 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 will, you will focus on certain play because we are fixated with these markets. But then what truly is your market is something, a place. So it's a matter of paying attention to the people who are sending you messages. You know, sometimes we're artists, we just get so overwhelmed. We don't even check our messages. You know, you go to, I go to my Facebook, which probably I haven't looked in a long time. And I'll see so many messages. I read one, I try to answer another, then something put me there, I forget. You know, we are so drawn in so many different places that sometimes it's humanly impossible to attend to everything. But all of these are metrics and information mm, for you to gather the intelligence growth. yeah and you need that intelligence you know it's almost like acting like a country if you're a country you need intelligence to know what your enemies are up to what your enemies are doing for you and that. but in this case you need that artistic intelligence to know where there's a cultural resonance of your brand and your music and then when you do that and you're releasing a record yes it's what you do you target those markets first and because push to them. Yeah, 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 you because that's where you can nurture activity because immediately. America, yes. I'm told you came from Abidjan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came from yeah, yeah, that, yes, yes, yes. All yeah. these countries. Yes, yes. Europe, you're coming from the US, yes. LA, LA. I mean LA is like on the way outside <laughs> of, the, of the world. Well, I'm getting ready for I have a tour coming. So I'm playing SOBs in New York, wow. making concerts in New York, and then uh, July 9th, and then um and then I'm in Los Angeles and uh, on the twenty second for a big concert at a grand performances. Uh, okay. you know, so a, a, a doctor sat here yesterday yes. to talk about, you know, men's health. Do you rest? You know, <laughs> that is, uh, <laughs> that's actually, it depends on the goalpost. You keep moving the goalpost as to what rest is, the definition of what okay. rest is. Okay. You know, you, there's, there's, there's emotional rest, there's mental rest, there's physical rest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can have some of them, but without the others. You can have physical rest, but your mind is racing so much, you're overwhelmed with so many times. And then when you travel and you're getting in planes, you know, you're landing in different time zones and, you know, the clock changes, the food changes, the air changes and all of those things, you know, they take a big toll on you, you know, in terms of your health. So for me, uh, first of all, I'm a vegetarian, so obviously I don't, okay. you know, and I'm also into wellness and exercise, you know exercising, jogging, being in the gym, and all of those things are such important things for me because when you have such a rigorous, you know, schedule and also moving in different places, you know, you're coming to contact. So you how, how do you do that? Like every morning when you wake up? Every morning when you wake up. Or, like yeah. when even I have, you know, I land in, a, in another country, what I do is that I try as much as possible because you want to be on the time, on the time zone. So I wake up and I go jogging like earliest of that day mm. uh, to get the exercise going and then also to be right with the clock, mm. you know. So you do that and then you, you have to take, you know, vitamins. You got to eat right and you got to drink a lot of water, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of keeping hydrated. So that takes care of the physical part. But sometimes the... After all these travels, you know, you get back home and you're just so exhausted, you know, and you need certain time. You have to take time to also work on yourself and so take you, care you of yourself. So do you cut health. off? Okay. Sorry, serious. Yes. Yeah, no, so speaking about taking time, resting and all that, I would like to tangent off into the rest of Rocky Dawuni's life because there is a rest. The music, <laughs> even if the beauty, the music is 99%. You know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know there's a 1% that I'm telling is you. just an what? ordinary, loving human being who is playing the roles we all try and play. I'd, I'd want you to, to tell me a bit more. A about lot of that times, you know, rest is, you know, you, you, you have to go, you know. And I know that it's, it's hard to tell people to understand this, is that, you know, the demands of where you are being called to supersedes your comfortability, you know. Hmm. So I make sure that I, within the times that the, the, the little opportunities that I get, you know, maybe I'll get some extra sleep or something, you know, but, you know, you wake up and you have to work for some certain time. Is there family? <clears throat> where there's family, yeah. So how, how do you tie them into your... Because now I'm thinking, 9 July, this, 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 this yeah, Costa Rica. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you just wow. keep going, you know. I mean, you family just 
catches up, you know, <laughs> most of the time, you know, and then you get the time too that you're able to fully focus on family, you know. But in the long run, as I say, it's all about that when you have a career, you know, there's certain sacrifices that happen. You know, so sacrifices like social situations, you know, you can be, you don't have the time sometimes to go into, so, you know, other stuff that, you know, you're moving from one thing to the other. Right now, I just got in a few nights ago uh, from the United Nations, uh, the celebration of World Environment Day uh, in Cote d'Ivoire that was hosted by the government of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, so you had a uh, UN officials from World uh, UN Environment fl flew in, and myself as a goodwill ambassador was invited by the government to come and then be part of the celebrations. I was there. I was part of panels. I was part of you know, uh, you know, I had a speaking uh, role in all of that. Uh, you know, focusing on circular economy, all of these grand important ideas that are going on for the continent. And then I fly right back to Ghana, like literally with very little sleep. Here I am with you guys in early morning. I know sleep. We're sorry. We're so sorry. <laughs> and then, no, and then a we few days from now, I'm also preparing right now to, for a tour. So every day in addition to all of those. So not to, you know, I, 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 I don't like talking about myself, you know, and the, the things because when God gives you uh, blessing, the, the, what you have is the power of you to be um, to 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 be prepared and be able to utilize that blessing, and that means that you have to do everything humanly possible mm -hmm. to make sure that you you know you are in the right health, you're in the right mindset, you eat well, uh, when you have the opportunity to sleep, you sleep well, and then you just all of a sudden you know also take time to meditate and you know just clear yourself, you know, of negative influences and, and, and have a positive attitude towards life. Is I there, feel that if you can do that, it really helps you to navigate all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there pressure on the, on the family side to be there? Same way, like, your fans and the career also draws that pressure out that you, you need to show up in Greenland, you need to make it to L.A., you need to do this. That commitment and non-stop, that metronome that you are on with the career <laughs> is, is another metronome Timing you at home. Yeah, I, yeah. One thing, I've watched all your stuff, right? And one thing I want to hear more of is the family. Not for the clout of the press and the No, blogs, no, you know. The I want to know how Rocky Dauni lives life when it's not about the music. You know, my family is so understanding of what I do. You know, you know, even my, you know, my, when it comes to my immediate, you know, family, you know, they're all, you know, my daughter is in university now. So, you know. She doesn't need me too much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> she's fine. You know, yeah, yeah, she's fine, you know. So, um, and then, you know, my brothers and sisters, you know, they're up in Koforidia. So, you know, I, and then my older brother is the chief of Bumbo in Northern Region, you know. So they, they have, you know, they don't bother me, you know. They just know, they do their thing. And then when it's time to really connect, you know, they will check in with me to see when they haven't heard from me in a while, they will check in uh, with me to see. So, you know, it's like, you know, everybody just works with you to make sure that, you know, things are going right and you are doing the right thing, you know. So I think that it's all a balance that comes from you also when you have time, like, you know, you engage everybody and you all work together. It's a matter of bringing harmony, creating harmony. I think that that's what has really I, helped me. I have, I have two girls and they, they, they love daddy more than anything. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Looking yes. at that, so is it is it just um, your daughter who's yes. taking all the attention? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, I mean, she got all the attention all the time and now she is, you know, she's, she's a big her, woman. Yeah, she's a big, big woman. So <laughs> Is she taking anything music in? Uh, you know, yeah. she's, uh, she's, uh, she's studying... Um, uh, communication arts. Okay. So she goes to one of the colleges uh, in Los Angeles, and then holidays she's back in Ghana, and all of that. You know, so she and then she also loves music. You know, right. but she also loves the visual way of. And for me too, you know, it's like when you when I was growing up, the same way my parents were. When I said I wanted to do music, they were like, "Go do your thing. We'll give you support, support and you yeah. do." whatever you do, as long as you're going to school, mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. long as you're focusing on your education. Mm -hmm. Same way, too, that I feel that to be a parent, you have to identify what the talent of your child is yeah. because that talent is what God has given them. 
So you don't try, when your, your child is an artist, don't try to make him a lawyer because he'll go and be drawing in the courtroom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, our, our time is fast spent, but let's just touch lastly on your new music. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, yes, uh, yes, I, yes. There's a, um, we, I just dropped a new uh, song, actually, a few days ago uh, with Chicheku. Mm -hmm. And it's a song called Africa Till I Die. And it's a song about all of us, you know, about yeah. this incredible continent that we're from, this incredible country that has given us a lot, okay. you know, that we have to do everything in our power to preserve it. And also everything in our power to speak truth to power and leadership that nobody owns the country. You know what I mean? And nobody can make decisions that will compromise the ability of the future generations to be able to take whatever is our God-given resources for our development. Mm -hmm. So that means that our resources shouldn't be sold to others. Yeah. Our resources that are for our development shouldn't be mortgaged by only a self-appointed few mm -hmm. for the sake of their clique at the expense of all the people. So it's a, a, a song about recognizing what our power is and what our collective power is. If we work together, how far we can okay. get. Yeah. If we work together, if we have leadership that works on our, for the people, with the people, and on behalf of the people, and in the interest of the people, how far we can get as a people. Because... When you, when you go to America or you go to any country and you are doing anything and you're a Chinese, the Chinese can get up and say, don't touch my, yeah, my kin. When an Indian is in trouble anywhere, the Indians have the clout to say that don't do that. But when a black man, whether African-American or African is anywhere, we are so divided among ourselves. We are so kind of... Uh, we become the pawn of the game, the big game that is being played. We, the most endowed resource-wise, the most, the God, God gave humanity first stepped on earth in Africa's soil. Yeah. When you look at everything, if we're talking of the Garden of Eden, it was from here because this was the first place humanity sets there. So if God has given us all of these resources and up till now today, we have to cheer when somebody gives us some form of aid or, you know, yeah. you know what I mean, of, yeah. some support, then we take it as an achievement. Then we've come to falling so far from what our potential is. So for me, it's not a matter of, you know, I don't even sit here as a means of indicting anybody because I could be a firebrand and say things. But I believe that even Judas was remorseful after. So mm -hmm. those who are even the ones that are betraying our trust can become part of us. Even Saul became Paul, yeah. you know. So if the interest is our land, our people, our country, our continent, and then we also get away from this tribal stuff that is eating into us like a cancer, you know, even when somebody has the potential to be the one to push forward, then with our tribal things, we just go in there to just destroy it just because we feel that it has to be our tribe. You know, tribe is a cultural blessing. It shouldn't be, it you is. know, something that draws us back. We should value it, celebrate it, and honor it, but we should work together collectively. And that's what this song is about. And then the, also going back to fundamentals is that because of the, the, the message of the song too, we decided to utilize the Ghana sound, which I always say, the Ghana sound, I always say high life music. Mm. That's the Ghana sound. You know, high life music, mm. even when you listen to my, my sound, my music, the afro root sound, the foundations, you know, you have reggae music and all that, but you always find high life oh, inspiration nice. in there. High life music has been the inspiration for even the afro beats that you're hearing. You go deep, deep, dig into it, it was high life I because it was built upon uh, the foundation of high life music. But now, the only place you see high life music being played is a lot of white bands out there are playing high life, are selling out venues, are playing our authentic high lives. 
But then you had also our high life grids, like you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, Sun Trophy, you know, bands like new bands like Sun Trophy, Chichiku, uh, you know, are doing very well because high life is popular. But you have JW Amboli, you know, out there playing concerts everywhere, you know, uh, you know, Ebo Taylor, you know, out there, you know, like so. So what we have to know is that there is a value, Pat Thomas. Oh, but Thomas is out there playing. There's a value in that sound. And others are trying. So we shouldn't relinquish this amazing sound that has defined who we are as a people. Hmm. There should be a museum of high life that should honor the greats, the high life greats who have said, and then also all other music that has spawned from high life. There should be a museum. Why don't we have a museum of high life or a museum of Ghanaian music? I will go much more. The real Ghanaian music. Up till now, in our history, the first country to be independent, why don't we have that? We should have something like that. We should honor. Why don't our radios play a bigger chunk of our music? When you look at our playlist, and we say we want to create an industry, but we play a higher number of music. You know, pardon my, my what's it called? Our African brothers, great. We will support them and all of that. But there's also local industry that we need to strengthen. If you don't strengthen your own, who will strengthen it for you? No one. And then when others are successful, we all run to chase their sound and think that chasing their sound is the way to go. We have been innovators. Afrobeats, so many different sounds that have become global and content that have has its innovation in Ghana. And innovators are not good followers. You know, we can't follow. We have to. So this song, me and Chicheku use high life music, but we use the language of pigeon, a global language on it to talk about Africa till I die, Charlie. Just say, say, tuntumini fimi mua, bibie ni huwa bekebiu. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I wanted to ask one, just one okay. question. Okay, um, uh, just before you ask it, mm -hmm. let me just put this out so sure. that we can quickly. For those of you who are listening to Plus 89.9 FM, I'm sure we have to sign out for me now. Um, we'll spend the next four minutes right here on TV. But before you go, every time we eat, food and sugars are trapped between our teeth, leading to tooth decay, gum disease, and in some cases, foul breath as well. Brush your teeth every morning and night with Petrodent Cavity Fighter. It gives your teeth protection they need, leaving you with 10 times stronger teeth. Now, it's also fortified with pro fluoride and microcalcium ingredients sealing the tiny and invisible holes in your teeth it prevents cavities keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy petroleum cavity fighter maximum cavity protection 10 times stronger all right we have four minutes to go Guys, yes I, go. I just maybe he can i know it's going to be a lot or a mouthful but maybe he could uh, summarize it for us mm. and just you have 30 minutes. seconds on yours we have three minutes yeah. i have my 30 seconds <laughs> hurry up so rocky um <clears throat> i've noticed that over yeah. time there seems to be some kind of decline well relatively decline or arguably decline in the reggae dancehall industry here in Ghana. The kind of amplification they had during your time, Shasha Mali, when I say during your time, I mean when, you know, the squad, yes, know, Shasha yes, Mali, yes, yes. Black Rasta, yes, yes, you know, yes. at least you would hear some reggae dancehall song on our commercial airwaves, yes. you know, and it was always re- emphasizing the consciousness, yes. you know, in every barbering shop, the average barbering shop in Ghana, you would hear some reggae music. But yes. these days, it's not really the case. Uh, is this something that we should be worried about? I especially think that, for the Ghanaian... I think that, you know, industry? just like everything, everything has its flow and ebb, mm. you know. But if it's Ghanaian, why are we not giving it, um, the attention. you know, the attention? And also, if you can see... Um, you know, all that work that was done, even prior to mm. our movement, yes. you know, there was, you know, classic handles, all of these mm. Mm. artists that were mm. playing mm. reggae, mm. you know, even Amachi the Dave, when you check yeah. all of his stuff, yeah. you know, there's mm. certain reggae things mm. in there, mm. um, Kojoenchi, mm. you know, mm. so, it, you know, it has been a, a trajectory that has gradually, gradually been moving till our time when, you know, we also amplified it mm. and all of that, and then we're still amplifying. And then there's the uh, the dance hall variants too. Yes. That it's you know has become really one of the most popular the strongest, yeah. musical the forms musical here. Forms, yeah. So the mu in terms of the music's evolution and spirit, it has not died off. Mm. What has died off is the apathy to 
pushing what is ours and also jumping in whatever is trending mm. at the expense of the, the treasure, the yeah, yeah, the treasure trove of what we have. Yeah. What is stopping yeah. us from playing Ghanaian music and creating an industry? It's almost like you need to remove the veil from your, or somebody needs to <laughs> wake us up. Mm. You know, mm. it's the same thing. It's the same thing about going to go look for debt loans and all of that kind of stuff when you have some of the richest land here. You know, what is going to take us to? see the value of what we have and not leverage our wealth and sell our wealth for money. For money. Mm. Okay. You know, so it's like there, there's a saying that in the abundance of water, the, fool is, the fool is thirsty. And it's not to say that people are fools or somebody's a fool. It's a thing to show that if you don't recognize what you have, somebody else will mm, come, come and again. own what you have. So all of this stuff, you know, I'm not sitting here saying that, oh, well, me, 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 play my music. Mm. But my music should be played. Mm. I'm not saying that Black Rasta, hey, 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 but Black Rasta's music should be played. Mm. Mm. Samini's music should be played. Mm. Nanam Pedu's music should be played. Mm -hmm. Black Prophet's music should be played. Mm -hmm. Amachi Dede's music should be played. You know, uh, Osibisa, mm. Shatawale, mm. um, Kweku Flick, mm. Black Sharif. Mm. You know, I'm just throwing names. Mm. And obviously, I haven't said any woman's name, but I will say mm. it. You know, Efia, mm. Mm. you know, Adina, all of these musicians of that them. are there that are working and putting their heart and soul into their craft and are Ghanaians and are doing it. Although, you know, they are focused on what they are doing, but in the long run, it is also an asset to our country. Mm. We need to, if we want to grow as an industry, you can grow an industry by just piping it outside things into your country, it will never work unless you start growing something that is uniquely yours. And you already have it. Mm. You're just standing on the stone and looking for a stone. You know, so we just have to, this is a conversation that we all need to have. And, and, and frankly so. You know, I know that, you know, sometimes I say things and then somebody will take it, some blogger will listen somewhere and package it and then try to trend and write some demeaning stuff somewhere. Mm. And I'm telling that I'm ready for them to when they do that. But <laughs> the, 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 what, what has to happen is that we have to face reality. We have to face what it needs, the concrete step that needs for us to move from step A to step B. Mm. And this is not about talking, having panels and all of that. Kind of stuff. That the challenge, you too much talk. Everybody can talk. What is the action? What's the action? What's the actionable points? Radio. What, can we say that? Can we? Can I challenge Ghanaian radio right now? I know nobody would take the challenge, so maybe I shouldn't challenge, but I'll challenge. Okay, I want to challenge Ghanaian radio from now till December. Seventy percent Ghanaian content. Pacho, I'll leave you right there. I want that tip. <laughs> <laughs> I want to cut that tape. That, that, the whole interview, I want this tape. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I'm telling. looking for. Rocky, wow, our time is uh, our time is fast, <laughs> man. This is this has been very good. But watch out, it's uh, this new music out there. I'm very sure it's on the, all, all the stores. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the new video. Yeah, new the, video. We should let well. people see the video. Yeah, we'll yeah. put it out we'll there. Put it out. Um, okay. Uh, okay. For purposes of uh, streaming and uh, copyrights, we'll put it after the. Charlie, video. you are looking at me. We can copyright the this uh, thing. I'm the, uh, the copy and the right here. <laughs> 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 when, we, when we play now, YouTube would, would uh, strike us. We also stream in the streaming the show as well. Okay, uh, okay so okay. it's definitely going to be on the screen when this conversation is up, uh, so you can watch it. Please, uh, the title is Africa till I die. I die. Yes. yes, Africa, Africa till, till I, I die. die. Three, and it's out three, here. Three. The video is out. Please go and support support Ghana. Yes, yes, definitely. Rocky, thank you very much. Our time is fast, man. Sorry to keep you up, uh, on the screen still now. But anyway, have an enjoyable weekend. Enjoy, and please don't forget it, the last statement, right? We are we are going to challenge ourselves with a 70-30 on this. Yes. Let's see how it works till December. Rocky mm -hmm. says so. My name is Jay Foley. Uh, Cereal. Cereal is out. Yes, Ole. We out. Rocky, thank you, Peace so much. Peace out. Yes, very sir. Good.